back to the workshop, everybody. I got my gloves on today because I woke up this morning. There was about eight inches of snow out there and a snowstorm coming. So buckle up. We're going to show you a plug-in real quick. This is the latest and greatest thing from Stagecraft Software. Woo-hoo-hoo! Uh, that's my company. Uh, it's called Beat Rebuilder. Rebuilder because it tears it apart and then lets you rebuild it. And along the way, you can do a lot of creative things with beats. So, uh, yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so most of what we're going to go over today is the basic usage of this plugin. You can use this plugin to do like four or five things really well. Uh, for example, uh, replacing part of a beat, replacing all of a beat, getting turning an audio beat into MIDI, so pulling the MIDI out of a short like loop, also pull, pulling the MIDI out of a track if you want to get, for example, just the bass drum every time it hits on a Beyonce track or something like that. It's fairly easy to turn that into MIDI. Uh, and then uh, you can do a lot of like sort of remixing the beat, uh, crossfading, stuff like that, which I'll, I'll show you too. Uh, so we got, we got it started up, and you get this nice friendly screen that lets you know right away it is listening. Uh, and let's see what happens when we push, push play. Here's a, just a stock Ableton beat. Uh, let's play the beat first, turn this down. So here's... Okay, just a regular 80s beat. Uh, there's three or four... Th parts going on in there. And you'll notice right away, it's dissected it, color coded some stuff. Um, it tells us it thinks it knows what's going on. So let's give a listen to what, um, what Beat Rebuilder is putting on top. Okay, and you can tell it is on beat. It's hitting the same onsets. Uh, and there are, again, three or four different things going on. Uh, it's not perfect, and there's lots of ways we can tweak it. That's what we're gonna get to in, into in a minute. Uh, but first, let's just uh, try the presets up here at the top and see what happens. Okay, so I'm sure you get the idea. Um, this is layering sounds on top where it thinks appropriate, but we want to go a little deeper now and change how it's matching and also get a better understanding of how it's matching so that we can really find that beat, right? Because uh, getting a little ahead of ourselves, but if I go over here and look at it, um, I can see already it's missing a couple bass drums, for example, a couple kicks. Uh, so let's just, uh, I'm going to listen to the beat and we're going to look at the kick. If I select a fingerprint, in this case, uh, they're labeled here just low, mid, high, uh, based on where they are in the spectrum, okay? Here's the one that is the lowest, which generally is on the far left. And if I click on it, it'll bring up the spectrum. It'll bring up the part that it's matching, right? So it found this little pattern, and it thinks it sees that pattern. If I hit play again, it's down. you just barely hear the beat. There we go. Uh, and you, you can see it kind of flashes blue, color changes a little bit every time it matches. So every once in a while, we'll find something that matches this beat, and it says, there it is, and it grabs it, okay? In this case, though, it's hitting mostly with the snare. So I don't want that. So I'm gonna go over here to where I know there's a bass, right? Okay, right here is a kick drum. And I can select this part of the spectrum and tell it, send to fingerprint number one. You saw the pattern change there. Um, you know, this is the, the unique identifier of uh, these sounds. And over here, we can change how closely we're matching. So if I put it up close to exact matching, you'll notice it matches just the one, one or two places where it really hears exactly that sound. And then if I bring it down, it'll start grabbing uh, more. There you go. And in my case, I'm wanna, you might wanna take a look too at things like the threshold and the variance threshold. Sometimes you wanna get uh, you know that a, a sound is only going to be very loud, so you bring up your variance threshold. Other times, you've got a cymbal or something, and you're like, no, we really need the, we need to, sometimes it's going to be loud, sometimes it's going to be really quiet. This will differentiate and uh, give you different velocities for the sounds as well. Um, so if it hears a sound, but it hears it quieter, it puts it into the MIDI sequence, but it does it uh, with a lower velocity. So it's very, it's very smart. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at some of the things we can do with this once we've kind of locked in a beat. Um, I've switched beats here. Let me just play it for you real quick. It's a drum and bass beat. So you can see uh, 
Um, first of all, over here on the mixing deck, this is just standard stuff that you'd kind of expect. You can change the volumes of all the different um, fingerprint print tracks. You can also change, uh, you can also crossfade between the two and you've got EQ for each. So you could take a beat, drop out the bass and just uh, have the kick, you know, the new kick come in so you can replace a kick, for example. Over here in the, in the middle section, the build section, is the MIDI that's being built. So as it listens to this beat, as it listens to whatever's coming through, it continuously um, creates MIDI. It is sending that MIDI out right here. So you can just record the MIDI and uh, you could run a whole track through here and get the MIDI um, that it builds. But you can also grab it as a clip right here at any time. So let me just show you that. So there you go. So once you've, once you've found uh, the beat, once you've kind of locked down all the parts, you can grab it as MIDI, take it into the DAW, or you can play with it right here. There's a limited amount you can do here. This is not like a full sequencer. You can change the, um, the timing a little bit. You can change the note length. You can change the velocity. But there's no jitter. There's not a lot of other things. Uh, you can set what notes are being output, but you can't really um, move these if you wanted to change the the notes for some reason, but it's still a pretty good, uh, pretty good little sequencer and it's going to get better because there's a bunch of features to add to that. There's a snap, basic snap function up here that will be um, expanded on a little bit uh, and a few other things are going to show up here. So each one of these fingerprints uh, also has essentially a little audio clip attached to it right down here. So when we replace our kick, for example, here's the kick that it's replacing it with. Um, I'll and you can see when it plays. Let me just turn everything else off. Okay, there's our kick, right? Uh, we can change the mode of this kick to, there you go. Now it will uh, release whenever this note, note releases. So we can do th fun things like this, make it really punchy. Um, over here, you can add an effect if you wanted to. This is going to change a little bit. Uh, this area, this part's going to get smaller, and there's gonna, probably going to be a um, like velocity sensitivity uh, mod over there, but we haven't quite haven't quite settled on it. There's also speed adjust, so you can really alter the sounds. Uh, this gives you a lot of latitude to kind of play around with what sort of sounds you want coming through here. But again, if you don't uh, if you if you can't find what you want here, it's easy enough to export and you know use any other drum machine on your computer. Also, I should point out you can uh, grab audio right here. Here's our online selection of audio. So let me just look for kick. <clears throat> Pull up a bunch of kicks. There's actually more than this, but it, um, I need to add some things that'll make this. There you go. Go further. Yeah, you can go and go and go and go. So, and there's a lot of stuff like this user contributed stuff that for whatever reason, this guy decided to name Delafun and then like 12 question marks, whatever. So there's a lot here you can. I can't get no sleep. Yeah, so for example, let's say, where was that? Right here, left on road. I'm gonna drop that here and then. time that hits we're gonna hear this let me turn on the video. idea there's a lot you can do with that um there's also recording in there which is really weird i don't know what you did with that i'm sure people will figure it out uh yeah look for this to change a little bit uh it is still kind of at the very end of our beta it's launching really soon but come check it out <laughs>